in his 90s by the time that they finally have a child. But prior to that, Abram's looking around. He's saying, man, you know, time's running out. Things are happening fast. I've got to step in here because God obviously forgot all about what he said to me. And so we know this story, right? It, Abram, he, 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 he lays with, with, with Hagar with Sarah's approval, right? We can't forget that. You know. Then she got mad after they had a child. She was like, why'd you do that? Because you said I could? <laughs> and then she gets mad at him. But here it is, it's, it, it, you know, he, he, he has this child named Ishmael, and, 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 and it is really a product of the flesh because there, he's living in the temporary. He's looking at his life saying, time's running out. I'm getting too old. I'm not going to get married in time. I'm not going to have children in time. I'm not going to walk into ministry in time. Time's running out. Oh, maybe you're 20, 30, 40 years old, and you're saying, man, time's running out, and, and I've got to push this thing forward because if I don't, it's never going to happen. Abram was 75. As long as you have a breath in your body, God's plan can still be activated in your life. There's no need to sit there in fear and worry whether or not God remembers who you are. Listen, a strong, solid, stable uh, a life before God is one that, that has faith to believe that, uh, you know, for their future. All of a sudden, you know, now Abram, he decides he's going to get involved. i got to help God. I've got to help God. I've seen this happen so many times. So many times. Well, he's got good hair, Pastor. He's got all his teeth. He even has a job. Is he a Christian? No, but I, I, I'm, going, I'm going for it. He's not a believer. I'm a, I'm a believer. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to change him. I'm going to change him. He's going to be a Christian. We're going to, oh, I've got visions of us walking into church with our children, just walking in, you know, and, and honoring God. And, and then next thing you know, you never see them again. I've seen some things over the years. You see, God doesn't need our help. What God needs is our obedience. What God needs is our faith. What God needs is our patience. One man said it so well. He said, true patience is waiting without worrying. You see, we need patience as we wait for the plan of God to unfold in our lives. And as the plan of God unfolds in his timing and in his season, there is a hearty amen to what God is doing. Abram goes and he establishes it, and we're still feeling the effects of what Abram did many thousands of years ago. You still have the battle going on between the Israelites and the Palestinians and, and, and the Arabs. You still have what's going on is the battle over Jerusalem and the battle over Israel and the battle of a state's existence. And there have been so many people that have thought, of, how are we going to produce peace in that nation? But the truth is, it's still the byproduct of one nation being formed out of the flesh and the other one being formed out of the spirit and it is still conflict and it will be conflict there until the last breath is breathed on the earth amen we're still feeling it we're still feeling it and, and and here it is Abram is now worrying about how God's going to do it he has a child by the name of Ishmael and and, and next thing you know there's conflict going on in his family and he has to send out Ishmael and he has to have to go away but God is still faithful you know, even when you make a mistake, God is faithful. Even when, 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 when in your heart, you say, I think God looks at our heart. We look at actions, God looks at heart. We judge people by their actions. We want them to judge us by our heart. But my heart didn't mean it, but your actions spoke it. But God judges us by our motives of our heart. And God knew that Abraham was still fundamentally good. He was still fundamentally solid. He was still fundamentally intact. And as a result of that, God said, I spoke a promise over your life, and I'm going to bring it to pass. And so God speaks again to Abram. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. Look at what he says, if you turn there with me. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. 
After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. And the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. Verse 5. This word, he. Man, I think just that little word grabbed me so strongly in my studies. He took him outside. God literally grabbed Abram by the hand. He said, Abram, I know that you're in fear right now. I know that you're worried about your future. I know that you're concerned about what's going on in your life, and you're, you're trying to operate in the flesh, and you're so concerned about what's going on. But the way the text reads is that as if God literally grabbed Abram by the hand, manifested himself, and said, Abram, I, I need us to walk outside for a second. And if you could imagine the, the, the geography and, and, and the context of the text, it's dark out. Abram is in a tent. Maybe he has candles lit in this tent. There's no light pollution in the area because there are no big cities with lots of light. And so if you've ever been in a place with very little light pollution, the stars seem like they jump out of the sky. I remember when I was in Haiti, I, I, I walked outside and, and, and the stars, you could see the galaxies. That's how dark it is there. And that's how prominent the light of the stars and the galaxies are. God reaches down and grabs Abram by the hand and walks him outside of his tent. And he looks at him and he says, Abram, look at what the scripture says. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And look what it says about Abram. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. You see, sometimes you need a tangible connection to the promise, the eternal promise of God for your life. And that's what God did to Abram. God shifted his perspective, his paradigm. He grabbed a hold of Abram and said, Abram, I need to remind you who made the sun, the moon, and the stars. Who hung them in time and in space? Who created the earth around you? Abram, let me grab you by the hand and let's take a walk together, my friend. And as he walks outside, he says, Abram, I want you to just look up. He said, I want you to count the stars. And they're so bright and they're so evident. And the galaxies are so clear that as Abram starts to count the stars, it's like counting the, the grains of sand on all the beaches of the world. And it's impossible. And Abram looks up there and he's reminded once again of the promise of God. He's reminded once again that even in the darkest hour, God is with him. He was reminded once again that even in his lowest point of his life, God was there with him. He said, I want you to count the stars if you can. And then God reassures Abram. He says, Abram, so shall your offspring be. Abraham, Abram, excuse me, believed the Lord and he credited to him as righteousness. God was going to increase Abram in a righteous way, and now Abram had a promise. God began to show Abram that he had a destiny, and destiny always starts with a promise. That's why it's so important to think about the promise of God in your life. What has he said? What has been prophesied to you? Where are you in your walk with God? And hold on to those promises. And no matter what comes your way, be determined not to be shaken loose from the promise of God. If you're believing God for uh, salvation for your husband, hold on to the promise. Don't walk in the flesh. Trust 
God and allow God to manifest himself through his promise so that way the glory will come through him. If you're trusting God so that way one of your children will get off drugs and alcohol, my friend, trust him with all of your heart. Hold on to the promise of God and rehearse those promises again. Rehearse them and, and remind yourself that God said he is for me and not against me. God is on my side. God said that if I give it shall be given back unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Rehearse the promise of God. Hold on to it, my friend, with every ounce of strength that you have because God is true and let every man be a liar that one day God will perform exactly what he said he will do. Could somebody say amen? Abram tried to operate in the flesh to manifest the eternal, but God said, wait a second. I need you to understand that I am the eternal. And as a result of that, I will cause my promise and my plan to unfold in your life in its proper season. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, it says this. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. It doesn't matter how strong you are, how smart you are how much money you have, how well populated you are or socially connected you are. And it doesn't even matter how many friends you have on Facebook. Or Twitter or Instagram or Snap. It doesn't matter. Listen, God said it's not by your might. It just, it's just not by your might. You might be strong. It's not by your might. You can be the strongest man or woman in the world. It's not by your might, and it's not going to happen by your might. He said it's not by might or your power. It's not going to be by your wisdom. He said it's by my spirit. It's by my spirit. It's by my spirit. It's by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Listen, when God's spirit comes into a life of a person, radical things begin to happen. Change begins to occur. Things begin to move. Momentum begins to happen. God starts shaping you and moving you, putting one foot in front of the other, one step in front of the other. Oh, glory to God. And this is what God had to remind Abraham. Abram, it's not by your might. It's not by your power. It's not by your carnal plan or your temporary ideas of how you're going to fix things. Sometimes, many times, God just wants us to rest in his care and to rest in his arms. That's why he took Abram by the hand. He said, Abram, let's go for a walk, son. Let me, let me talk to you a little bit here. Let me get this right doesn't mean that we don't work hard and we don't trust hard and we don't pray hard. It doesn't mean any of those things. I like what one man said, pray or work as if everything depended on you and then pray as if everything depended upon God. We've got to join together because we're co-laborers with God. We work together with him. I was told very on in my Christian walk that God, it's easier for God to move a, a moving train than it is to start one. Right, A train has all these locomotives on the front end and they're just trying to get all the weight and all the momentum and all the push in order to begin to move that track and move that train. But once it's going down the track, it's very easy for God to divert off of that track. And so we have to work as if everything depends upon us and pray as if everything depends upon God. But at the end of the day, it's still by His Spirit. Because you can work your life and your fingers to the bone and nothing manifests. Oh, but you can rest in God's presence and then you can watch him do what he does best. Amen. Come on, give somebody a high five and tell them God's at work in your life. And though Abram wasn't perfect, he made some mistakes along the way. God's promise still came and brought increase to him. God said he made a promise, and Abram, this is your season. I'm going to increase your life in a dramatic way because I'm the Lord of the increase. Works of the flesh won't do it. Politics won't do it. Jealousy won't do it. Backbiting won't do it. It's going to have to be done by God's Spirit. It's going to have to be done by God's Spirit. Last scripture, then we're done. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 9 through 13. I love this. It says, I will look on you with favor. This is God speaking. And I believe that this is God's word to you and your family today. Men, I want to honor you. Fathers, I want to honor you today. 
for your hard work. It's not easy. In fact, yesterday I was talking to the men and I said, I think it's more difficult today than, than it ever has been to be a, a strong man, to be a father, even to be a mother or a woman. It's, it's, it's more difficult now. But I want to honor you and I want to pronounce this over you and your family. I'm going to ask if everyone, if you would please stand. If you would please stand. And I, I want to pronounce this over you and your family today because this is a powerful text. And, and if you would, if you would just, if you would do something like this for me. I want you to hold your palms up like you're going to receive something, like Daddy God's going to give you something. And I want to pronounce the blessing of God over your life this morning. And I believe that God's going to manifest this. He said this, I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. I will put my dwelling place among you and I will not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with your heads held high. Man, I pronounce that in Jesus' name on your family. I pronounce that in Jesus' name on your marriage. I pronounce that in Jesus' name on your job, in your emotions, in your soul, in your spirit. I pronounce it in Jesus' name. I pronounce that you're going to be still eating last year's harvest when you're going to have to move it out to make room for the new. God of more than enough, I pronounce it in Jesus' name. I pronounce wisdom and strength upon you. I pronounce it in Jesus' name. I present, pronounce new strategies and new prophetic insights into situations that have had you bound and confused in the past. I break it in Jesus' name. I break it in Jesus' name. Clarity of thought, clarity of vision, clarity of purpose, eternal destiny, eternal perspective over your life. No longer being bound by what is temporary, but being released into the eternal. I release it in your life in Jesus' name. Now let's give God a mighty shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Wow, as I was pronouncing that, God showed me a vision of a treasure chest with a key going into it and the door being open. And I believe that that's what God is doing this morning. He's unlocking hidden treasures in your life. Being moved from one place to the next. Say, no longer am I going to walk in the flesh to accomplish the will of God, but I'm going to have an eternal perspective in order to grab a hold of that which God has for me. Amen. Oh, amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Wow. Yes, Lord. I want you to just keep your hands lifted up. I know that God wants to do something in this place this morning. God's showing me things falling from heaven. If you're here today and you say, I want a new release of spiritual gifts in my life, I want you to lift your hands up nice and high. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for a new level of spiritual giftedness and manifestation of the calling of God upon your people. I thank you, Lord, that what was once hard now becomes easy because of the anointing. That which was bound is now loose because of the anointing. That which was confusing is now straight and wisdom is given to them in Jesus' name because of the anointing anointing. Father, open up the windows of heaven upon your people today in Jesus' name. And Lord, pour out blessings upon us that we don't have room enough to contain. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Father, we worship you. You're in this place today. You need a job. You need a better job. I want you to lift your hands up towards heaven. Father, I pray right now for those whose hands are lifted up towards heaven for a fresh anointing. I pray, God, that a new job, a, a, a better job, a, 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 an opportunity of employment comes to, the, to your people in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, there is a sweet anointing flowing into this place, Lord. Come on, just begin to worship the Lord with me, would you? Father, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Father, I pray fresh fire from heaven rolls down upon your people. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Take authority over those that are broken, over those that are weak, those that are weary. Take authority over depression, suicide. I break its back in Jesus' name. Fresh fire from heaven fall to strengthen us, your people, again. That our perspective would shift from that which is in the natural to that which is in the eternal. Thank you, Lord. Someone here today that you have been having major back issues, God says you're healed in Jesus' name. You're healed in Jesus' name. It's in the lower back region. Some mornings you can't even get out of bed. God says you're healed. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. Father, we worship you. Yes, Lord. We love you, God. changed because of your word. We are changed because of your word. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God a praise.